Now, by this stage, I've probably convinced you one way or the other of whether to use uh, the method one or method two that I've been using. So method one being a straight out sketch, um, find out where the intersection is, and then evaluate based on the graph that you've got. Or method two is just a wholly algebraic route uh, multiplying by the denominator squared. OK, so we're going to look at a more complicated example this time. 2x plus 3 over x minus 6 is going to be equal to x minus 2. Now, my method one here of sketching directly from this um, is going to start to get a little bit more complicated and, and more problematic for me, um, mainly because I've now got the rational function to deal with and I've got a straight line graph. And it's then difficult, it can be difficult to then determine where things are in relation to one another, okay? Now, I can still do it, it can still be done, um, but maybe there's another way that we can develop this into uh, something that we can work with. So, um, let's say um, I try to get everything onto one side of the inequality and try to write everything as one single function, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I am going to get the x minus 2 over onto the left-hand side. So 2x plus 3 over x minus 6, and I'm going to have plus 2 take away x is less than or equal to 0. OK? Sorry, it's greater than or equal to 0. So then, uh, what I want to do is I want to get a common denominator. I want to write it all as one expression. So we're going to have 2x plus 3 over x minus 6. And I'm going to have to multiply this top and bottom by x minus 6 because that's currently over 1. So I've got plus 2 minus x lots of x minus 6 over x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. Now I've got two fractions with the same denominator. I can combine them. So I'm going to have on the numerator 2x plus 3, and I'm going to want to expand this out. So plus 2x uh, minus 12 minus x squared and plus 6x. All over x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. OK. So then I've got um, minus x squared. I've got 2x, 4x, 10x in total. 3 take away 12 is minus 9. Over x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. Right, let's deal with this minus sign. I don't like that being there. So I'm going to multiply through by minus 1. And I'm going to get x squared take away 10x uh, plus 9 over x minus 6 is now less than or equal to 0. Now, the x squared take away 10x plus 9 can be factorised. So that's x um, minus 9, x... Um, what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, x minus 9, x minus 1. Sorry, I had a bit of a mind blank then. x over x take away 6 is less than or equal to 0. Sometimes I just find that I can do all the complicated stuff, but not the easy stuff. OK, so that's what we've got. So x take away 9, x take away 1 over x take away 6 is actually equal to 0. OK, how has that helped me? Well, now that's actually easier for me to sketch. OK, so if I want now wanted to sketch that, it's easier for me. Now, the denominator x take away 6 means that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 6. And because we've got x minus 9, x minus 1, that means it's crossing the x-axis at 1 and 9. So 1 and 9, I know it's crossing the x-axis there. Now, um, because you've got a quadratic over a linear term, that means as x tends to infinity, it's actually going to turn into a uh, diagonal line. OK, so you can have an oblique asymptote, so a diagonal asymptote that you're dealing with here. Um, I can work out where it crosses the y-axis by putting x is 0, 
So you can have minus 9 times minus 1, which is 9, over minus 6. So 9 over minus 6 is minus 3 halves. So I know it's doing something like this, so minus 3 halves here. OK, so it actually looks something like this. It's going through minus 3 halves, 1, and then tending up this way, and then coming from this direction, and then shooting off that way. So actually what you end up with, um, let me just get my ruler, OK, what you actually end up with is an oblique asymptote. So this curve and this part of the curve are tending towards it. Now you can find out what the equation of that line is, if you are interested, by doing a bit of polynomial division. If you divide x squared take away 10x plus 9 by x take away 6, okay, you're going to get um, a linear term, uh, something x plus something, and then a remainder. Okay? So the something x plus something, that is the equation of your line that it is actually tending towards, OK? Now, I'm not too fussed with that, OK? Because really, all I'm interested in is where is this graph below or equal to 0? So I can see it's clearly below it there when x is less than or equal to 1, or when x is, because um, we're less than or equal to, um, we're between 6 and 9. So greater than 6, but less than or equal to 9. OK, and so that is what I can use the graph to get me. Now, if... If you weren't too happy with the graphing side, OK, which, you know, I, I completely understand because, you know, it's, a, it's quite a difficult skill to build up, especially if you're only doing it for inequalities, OK, like these. Um, how you can deal with this and use that without having to make the sketch if you don't have a graphical calculator to help you is you can do a number line approach, OK? So the idea being that you can say to yourselves, OK, well, I know that the critical values, which is where it's crossing the x-axis here, are at 1 and 9. So I identify 1 and 9 on the x-axis, OK? And then I look to see what values are giving me positive or negative. So I would substitute a point in to the left of 1. So I could substitute in, like, 0, for example. So in the numerator, I'd have minus 9 times minus 1. And in the bottom, we've got minus 6. And so that's minus 3 halves. And so I'm negative on the left-hand side. That's me substituting x equals 0 into this. OK? Now, if I substitute in, uh, let's say, 2... OK, that's to the right of 1, but less than 9. So I get 2 take away 9 times by 2 take away 1 divided by 2 take away 6. And I get 7 quarters, so it's positive there. OK. And then um, I've got past 9, so 10. So then I've got 10 take away 9 times 10 take away 1 divided by 10 take away 6. And we get 9 quarters, and so it's positive there. OK? Now, that's my number line approach, but I need to be careful because I've also got the 6, right? So the 6 is causing the problem. So I know that it's positive here between 1 and 6, but what is going on between 6 and 9? OK, so I'm going to have to choose another point. So let's try 7. 7 take away 9 times 7 take away 1 divided by 7 take away 6. And that's minus 12. And so I get a negative region. OK, so this is effectively showing you the same thing. You're negative up to 1 because you're below the x-axis. Then you're positive. Then you're negative. Then you're positive. OK, so... This doesn't require you to draw the whole sketch of the graph. 
and you can use this for all those other examples that I've previously been through, okay, and try it out there. And so that's telling you where is the graph below or equal to zero, right? So there is where it's negative, and that's where it's negative, but you've got to be careful because you can't include the six, okay? So that's um, another alternative way that we can deal with this and uh, looking at more complicated problems. Now that doesn't mean that we can still um, that we can't still multiply through by the denominator squared. Okay. Now if I do that, I'm going to get two x plus three times x take away six is greater than or equal to x take away two times x take away six squared. Now I'm going to have to expand that and that. Okay. Right, so I'm going to get 2x squared, uh, I'm going to get take away 12x plus 3x take away 18. And on the right hand side I've got the x take away 2, then x squared take away 12x plus 36. So 2x squared um, take away 9x take away 18 on the left. Then I've got x cubed take away 12x squared plus 36x take away 2x squared plus 24x take away 72. So um, I've got 2x squared take away 9x take away 18 and on the right hand side x cubed um, take away 14x squared plus 36x plus 24x so 40 60x take away 72. Right, let's move everything onto the right hand side. Uh, so we've got minus 14x squared, take away 2x squared, so minus 16x squared. Uh, 60x plus 9x, so 69x. And then minus 72 plus 18. <sighs> minus 72 plus 18, so minus 54. Okay. Right, so now I've got to solve this cubic inequality, so let's write that as less than or equal to zero there. Okay, positive x cubed. Right. So then we have 1 minus 16, 69 and minus 54, putting that through my cubic solver. We're getting 1, 9 and 6, so 1 6, 9. Where is the parabola less than or equal to 0 below the x-axis? It's below it there or there. So when x is less than or equal to 1 or uh, x is greater than or equal to 6 but less than or equal to 9. But again, like we've seen previously, the algebraic route, it's very easy to miss the fact that you can't include the 6. Can't include the 6 because the original problem, 6 doesn't exist. Okay? So you always need to double check back to the original problem to make sure of that. So there's a few options there, okay, about how you can go about solving this. Um, really, it's going to be up to you. Um, but we're going to still go through a couple more examples in the videos just so you can kind of like get to grips with this and make uh, some kind of decision about which way you think would be best.